Hey everyone, it's Dustin Nolf with Keller Williams Realties, the Dustin Nolf team, and the Full House LLC, Pittsburgh Property Management. How are you guys doing today? So, we had um, some questions from some of our group coaching Patreons or patrons, and um, I want to look at those today. So, today we're going to be talking about expired leads and how we follow up with them. So we're gonna look at more detail on how to follow up with the expired uh, listing leads that we get. Um, so Khadija asked, how long do we follow up with these leads? So how long do you follow up with an expired before you give up, right? So we're gonna look at that. Jim asked, do we change the name on the mailer? So we have a mailer that we offer to our group coaching clients. Uh, it's the first expired mailer that my team sends out and it's the one that kind of we get the, all our basic results on as far as expireds go. And then he also requested to see what we do as far as an 8x8 campaign or a 33 touch goes for expired leads. So uh, 8x8 and 33 touch, those concepts come from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. If you d don't have that book, there's a link below. Please buy it if you're a real estate agent. Even if you're like any sort of sales, like insurance, mortgage, whatever. Like if you wanna learn how to build a team, a sales team, this is a great book. Just kind of insert and where, instead of where they say agent, like insert whatever it is that you do in there and you can use this to build any, any sort of business, really. Um, so, the link for that book's below. When we talk about 8x8 and 33 touch, we're talking about its marketing concept. So if you read the book, you're gonna get it, you're gonna understand it better, but we're gonna kind of touch on some of that here today. So I hope you stick around. I hope you make it to the end of this video so you can implement these business changing techniques and make a whole bunch of money this year off of them. Thanks for joining us. All right, before we begin, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell uh, for this channel, and you'll be updated. I'm posting three or four videos a week right now, so uh, there's a lot of good content that's being put out there. Um, if you hit the notification bell, you're gonna be notified of the content as soon as it is released, so you can check it out as soon as it's released. I offer very affordable coaching, so there's coaching links below for my Patreon site. We do real estate agent group coaching for 10 bucks a month. We do uh, team building coaching for 100 bucks a month, that's group coaching. And then we do one-on-one -on -one coaching for either real estate agents, uh, team building. So if you wanna become a lead agent for a team and you wanna build a team, uh, or you are building a team, and then wealth building and real estate investing, essentially. So the one-on-one -on -one coaching is 1,000 bucks a month and you can access that through Patreon. We have a lot of patron only content. So we were talking about the expired mailer. We're gonna talk about that today. You can download the expired mailer if you are a subscriber to my Patreon site or a member of the group coaching. So check that out, there's a link below. Um, right now we have on there an expired mailer or for sale by owner contract and we're gonna be putting up Craigslist ad copy as well. So you can just copy and paste the, the ads that I'm using on Craigslist and kind of put your own links in there. And that's available on our Patreon site. So check it out below. So getting back to these questions. So let's answer, we're gonna answer the, the uh, quick ones first. So Khadija asked, how long should I follow up with expireds? Um, and this goes for any lead. My, my uh, advice, whenever an agent asks me, how long should I follow up with this guy? Or how long should I follow up with this woman? Is who's gonna die first, you or them? Like you're gonna follow up with them until somebody dies. Uh, and that, you know, that might be a little bit morbid, but the whole idea is you're gonna stay in touch with this person for the rest of their life because whether or not they give you business right now doesn't matter because they will give you business throughout their lifetime if you build a rapport with them and build a relationship with them. And you know, some of the people that I talked to who had the worst attitudes that gave me the biggest amount of negativity up front ended up becoming my best clients. Uh, and that's because I didn't give up on them just because they gave me an attitude up front when I first met them. I didn't let that stop me and I followed up with them and I turned them into a client and I turned them into a referral partner for life. So follow up with them nonstop. If it's an expired, if they list their property 
then you can stop following up with them to solicit their business for the listing because in most states that's illegal, right? You're not going to try to get a listing when somebody else has listed that property. Um, however, one of the things I recommend to our agents is in Pennsylvania, and you're going to have to look into this for your state, but in Pennsylvania, if they've listed their home for sale with an agent and they're looking to buy a property, but they haven't signed a buyer agency agreement with an agent, then you can get their buyer business still. So like technically you could literally call every person who has their house listed and say, Hey, are you looking to buy a home? Yes, I am. Great. Are you working with an agent yet? No, I'm not. I'd like to interview for the job. Can I interview with you? And you could you could get buyer leads that way if you really wanted to. Um, I don't do that. However, it's a possibility. Uh, and that's in the state of Pennsylvania. Technically, that's legal. Uh, whether or not that's ethical, I don't know. <laughs> you need to, need to refer to uh, the Realtor Board and the Code of Ethics for that. But technically, it is legal in the state of PA as far as I know do your research before you call that uh, on people in Pennsylvania. Don't go blaming that on me. So we're going to follow up with them forever. Uh, Jim asked, should we change the name on the expired mailer? So in our expired mailer, it says dear neighbor, and then it's got the information for the mailer. Um, I don't change the name. I leave it as dear neighbor because the way I like, I've tried to do mail merge before. I hate doing mail merge. You can do it where you can have it like automatically put the first name in there. Um, so the problem is, is that like when I'm looking up names, especially if it's like an ethnic name where I'm not like, I don't understand first and last names when it comes to like Hindi names and things like that. So um, when I'm looking them up on Allegheny County, our website, we're going to get a, a name and it's, it's sometimes it says first and last name like so it's first last and then sometimes it's last first because the people who recorded it didn't know what the first and last name was so they get mixed up so i don't do a mail merge because i don't want to accidentally put somebody's last name in there and be talking to them like that's their first name so i just leave it as dear neighbor that's my advice there i mean you can do it whatever way you want if you're good with mail merge go ahead and pop in the name um eight by eight and 33 touch so Jim asked about that, and that's what we're going to do the majority of this video on. Um, and here's 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 it all laid out, right? This is this is the plan all laid out. So what I would recommend, this is best case scenario. If you have the time and resources to do this, this is how I would be going after expireds. We right now, my team does not do all of this. This is like our what we're going to aim to achieve. This is our goal, right? So we don't do all of this right now. However, we do, I'd say at least 50% of it, maybe more. And we're going to look at this because if you're doing all of this, you should have a very high success rate at at least getting a listing appointment with expireds. If you're getting a lot of listing appointments with expireds, but you're not converting them into listings, then you have a conversion problem. And that conversion problem is you have a crappy listing presentation. So you need to get a good listing presentation too. If you're a high D or a high I personality, and we're going to talk about discs, disc profiles in other videos, but high D and high I personalities tend to like to wing it. So you might go on a bunch of appointments before you even have a listing presentation and try to win the person over with your personality. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes that, that does not work. I'm going to tell you that if you're a high D or high I and you're prepared with a listing presentation, you're going to have extremely fantastic results because you are the type of person high D's and high I's can get along with and build a rapport with people quickly. Okay, so if you can build a rapport quickly and you're also prepared for the listing presentation, then you're going to have both ends of it. Okay, so in most cases with sales, it comes down to, and this is a whole other video that we'll do, but it comes down to personality is the one half of it and then preparedness and organization is the second half. If you have both of those, you're going to win more. If you only have one side of it, you're only going to win with the people who match up with that side. Okay, so you're going to win 50% of the time, maybe less than that, depending on what personality you're leading with. We'll get into that later. So anyway, um, here's what we do. So this is the start of it. Every morning, Monday through Friday, the first thing that our administrator does or our marketing coordinator is prepares 
the expired mailers for the day. So we go in and there's a, a whole other video on this. We're going to link to it below here. If you want to uh, check out that video, it shows you how we look up the expired, um, the, the owner mailing addresses and things like that. So we'd send out mail every day to every expired that just happened. All right. We pay for a system called Mojo. You can pay for Vulcan 7 too. I actually think I like Vulcan 7 better, although it's more expensive. So we pay for Mojo because I'm cheap. So we pay for Mojo 30 to 40 percent of the time. We're going to get correct phone number and and or email for the expired listing. So Mojo pulls the expired data, gives it to us, and then we put it in our database and then we call them. So we're mailing them first and then we're calling them second. I'm in the process now. I've we, we've just changed our CRM, so I'm in the process of creating an email campaign, um, and then we're going to put them on an email campaign. So if we got their email address, they're going to go on an email campaign. Um, that email campaign, the way I have it structured, and I've done it in the past, and I'm doing it now with this new one, is it get they get eight emails, they get one email per week. So when we talk about an eight by eight, I believe that's eight touches over eight weeks or something like that. I can't remember what the details are, but I overkill it in any case, like when it comes to any sort of lead follow-up. So we're gonna do eight touches as far as email goes in eight weeks, plus we ideally wanna do at least eight phone calls in eight weeks. So we're actually getting like 16 touches in eight weeks done, all right? So we overkill it with that. Um, this email campaign goes on for eight weeks, so that's a month and a half that it's going to run. And then ideally you want a second email campaign to start when that expired starts to get like old, where it's been a, a month and a half, they haven't relisted, and you just want to follow up with them over time. So you might put them on a 12 direct or a 12, I, I would call it a 12 direct, but it's an email campaign, it's not direct mail. So they get one email from you then e each month for a year. And same thing goes with phone calls then. So if you're calling them once a month and you're emailing them once a month, that's 24 touches of follow-up throughout that, that last year. So um, let me grab my calculator real quick. You're looking at 24 plus 16 plus if you send them four pieces of mail, that's a total of 44 touches over about a year and two months. Okay, so that's way more than 33 touch, which is what the MREA book recommends for people you've met. These people, we haven't even met them, okay? Like, we haven't met them, we haven't talked to them. If we haven't talked to them, we're just going to keep touching them for 44 touches over a year and two months. If you do that, you're going to have fantastic results. And you're, yes, you're going to have people that tell you to, you know, piss off, basically, leave me alone stop calling me that's fine take them off your calling list you're gonna have you're gonna have enough expireds stacked up here over the year where you're gonna have a pipeline of listings to last you you know forever as long as you keep doing this you'll have listings forever mail use the expired letter that i've provided in the patreon uh subscription link um, you can find that below if you're not a member go below click on the link go in, sign up for any of the coaching levels and you're going to get access to the expired letter tweak it okay i'm not saying go in there and just print out my expired letter and send it out i mean if you want to that's fine i'll, I'll call the leads that call me in i'll talk to the leads that call me in and i'll refer them out to somebody else but you should be going in there and putting your own information in there right so we want them to call you not me um put your own photo in there the reason why i have a photo in there is because a lot of people want to get personal right they want to know who you are and, and what you do ideally so i'm working we're going to be tweaking this i'm going to be putting a family photo in there because i want to you know hit that hot button where you know this guy's got a family that he's supporting with this business so people see more of the personal side of it than just you know the business side of it um, and that com comes back to the disc profiles the, the I and the S personalities are going to want to know about you and who you are and what you do and what your hobbies are and things like that, what your goals are. The D and the C are going to want to know business. They're going to, going to want to know bottom line. So you want to make sure that you're hitting both those personalities. So you're going to have a, a family photo as what I would suggest and then 
details on you know what makes me the best right in that letter we have three different reasons why somebody should call us you should put in your own three reasons if especially if you don't do what I've got in there so like we say professional photography we say uh, internet hype and viral marketing and then we talk about we got over almost I think 3,000 active buyers in our database right now there's going to be around 5,000 homes sold in the Pittsburgh area so we got half the buyers in our database right now that's one of the things we're bragging about if you don't have 3,000 buyers in your database don't brag about that because when you're when the client asks you about it you're gonna you're not gonna know what to say okay so you want to tweak that expired mailer so it's personalized to you and your business um, so tweak it send it out every day follow the steps in the other expired video that's linked below here um, the steps for looking up the address and sending the expired mailer out um, then we're gonna call them and we're gonna call them like I said eight by eight you're gonna call them at least once a week and like what I recommend to our agents is if you call them today and they don't pick up and you don't leave a voicemail and nothing happens then you need to call them tomorrow and then you need to call them the next day and then the next day and the next day so you might call them more than one time a week uh, because you want to keep calling them until you get some sort of response right um, then we're gonna do emails and I'm gonna show you an example of emails and we are using uh, Real Geeks as our new CRM. Uh, this is I used Real Geeks years ago. I liked it. It's very, you know, it's not super pretty in the back end, but it's very functional. It gets the job done, and it's very affordable. So, if you're interested in getting a, a database and CRM system that does drip campaigns, email campaigns, and um, has an IDX built in, has buyer and seller landing pages, lead funnels, that sort of stuff. Real Geeks is the way to go. There's going to be a link below as well in the summary of this video. If you want to save $150 on Real Geeks, use that link, that referral link of mine that I'm going to have below. So here's an example of this is the first email that we have set up here to send out in the in the uh, drip campaign. So here's the deal, and this is my theory on email campaigns anymore. Um, the like we all know like direct mail when we get direct mail when we get that postcard that's like a huge sales pitch we know right away it's just a sales pitch and if we don't need it we just throw it away immediately we don't even look at the thing um, email campaigns are like that anymore as well like when you open an email like you can even you can look at the subject and if the subject is worded in a certain way you know that email's crap like it's just spam it's somebody trying to sell you something you don't even open it and even like Gmail has it set up now where that's going into a promos folder or whatever. It's going to a totally different folder, okay? So my idea with email is I want to have it set up where the seller can look at it and they don't know if it's spam or if it's an advertisement or if it's somebody who they actually know, right? So that's what these emails, that's, this is how these emails are set up to be. And you notice in here, like I don't, I'm not putting a whole bunch of HTML marketing BS in here. I'm, that's not a giant PDF that's just loading. It's just text, right? Like I want to keep it short and sweet and get it to the point. And and the whole thing that you want to do, whether it's a buyer or a seller lead that you're trying to convert, is you want to create a conversation with them. Okay. If you send them this big marketing piece that's like you know one full PDF page that's just loaded in there there's no real text to it it's just a PDF and they're gonna open it up and they're gonna read through all that and there's no links that they can click on there's no call to action it's just like hey this is how great I am and this is all the cool stuff I can do for you and if you want to hire me give me a call like they're not gonna call you all right the best thing that you can do is keep it short and sweet like this email here I'm going to show you and ask them a question because you want them to respond okay so we're going to ask them a question you end with a question alright so notice this is only a couple sentences here it's not a freaking paragraph trying to like convince them that I'm the best thing since sliced bread it's a paragraph or it's it's a very short paragraph with a question at the end alright 
when can we meet to get that property back in the market? I'm going straight in for the freaking appointment. I want the appointment. If I can get the appointment with one email, I'm going to get the damn appointment. I'm not going to try to set them up for 12 emails while somebody else is, is going after them aggressively. I need to be aggressive right now because these people, expireds on average, will relist their home within two weeks or less. Okay, so you need to be that agent. If you've called them, you've texted them, you've emailed them, you have mailed them, then you've made every effort to contact them and you've made more effort than anybody else is going to. So that's why we're doing this. We wanna follow up and do this every way we possibly can. All right, so, and I, I don't have text on this list here, but you can text them, okay? So Real Geeks has a te texting system. You can go in and send a text message from them and we have email, we have uh, text templates in here. So we can go in and just hit the template and it's gonna send out a text to them. And we can just do that every morning to every expired. And we would send, like I would send the same thing here basically and in order to elicit a, a response from them, okay? If you do that consistently and add that into this mix, then you've got everything covered, all right? So here's what we do. We ask the question, I'm going straight in for the appointment. I noticed it expired. Are you still interested in selling? I'd like to relist and get the job done. I'm telling them exactly what I want to do. I'm not trying to, you know, give them some sort of sly, you know, like people do with for sale by owners. Hey, I might have a buyer for your house. Can I come take a look? And everybody knows you don't have a freaking buyer, okay? So tell them the truth. I want to relist and sell your property. I'm going to do it. When can we meet? That's it. That's the whole point of this email. My signature pops in here below. And then I also have these in here. So what I want to do is kind of have the passive aggressive, because typically what you're going to have is, is these people are not going to respond to you. They're going to ignore you and, or, or they're going to seem to ignore you. But if you've got stuff in here, they might be researching you. All right. So, and the last time I used an email campaign like this, I got 17 expired listings. I listed 17 properties in one month because of an email campaign. And it was the same sort of stuff that I'm showing you right now. What I want them to do is I want them to go here and be like, well, I'm not going to call this guy back right now because I'm going to research, really research agents this time because the last agent didn't work. So I'm going to really research these agents before I call anybody back. So I'm going to go to this guy's link and check them out. Well, what I have, how I have it set up is that there's several links that do the work for me. So ideally, I want the seller to go here and I want them to look at this. Well, here's three reasons why I should call him. They're going to communicate with me. They have the best marketing plan. They'll give me $1,000 if somebody beats that marketing plan. That's pretty cool. Um, and if they're unhappy, they can cancel at any time. They're going to do a one day contract with me. That's insane. Oh, and right here, this is our listing presentation pretty much. So that's my buddy, Jeremy Cooper here. He, he did the voiceover for it, but they can come in here and see the listing presentation. So the whole point is I want them to do their research. Well, you know, how's this guy's Zillow reviews? They can go in here and open the Zillow reviews. They can see we've got five star reviews all through, all through the place. They can see what houses we sold, where we sold them. We have reviews on Yelp here as well. So what we're doing is we're going after, after the kill right here, and we might get an appointment out of this. But what's going to happen is a lot of times it's going to be through follow up. It's eight to 16 follow ups that's going to get you the appointment. So, what I want them to be able to do is come in here and research me and research my team. So, when they get like the fourth email and the fourth call from us, they know who we are and they say, Hey, you know what? I've been researching you. Come on over and bring the paperwork because I'm ready to sell my house. Like, I don't want to have to sit down and give them a listing presentation if I don't have to. Um, so this can be, save you a ton of time. So that's why it's structured the way it is. Okay, so that is the email that we're going to send out. And now we're going to send out 80 emails over eight weeks, and they're going to be structured in a similar sort of way. And I, like, I'll show you again real quick. So I, I should have probably showed you this real quick before I went on. So that's email number one here's email number two i mean see what we're doing here so i alternate too so this one's going to be a less aggressive um more passive email so hi again i hope all is well i just want to check back in why do you think your property didn't sell so i'm trying to create a conversation 
in my experience, there's only three reasons why real estate didn't sell. And this is a blog post that I created years ago. This was in 2015. This gets a ton of traffic. It's got 107 likes on Facebook. But what it is, is it's a blog post where they can read why properties don't sell. And it's, it's geared around expired. So I want to drive my expireds here. And then they can come in here and if they want to click on like, they want to do the passive aggressive route, they can click on what's my home worth or they could search for properties and then we'll get their lead information that way, okay? So this is a more passive aggressive one and then we go back into uh, something like this. So call my cell now to schedule a confidential one-on-one -on -one appointment so we can meet and get your home sold fast and for the most money possible, okay? So that's an idea of our emails. Okay, so we're gonna alternate between emails and phone calls. We're gonna do that for a total of eight weeks. I would suggest then following up with direct mail at the end of the eight weeks. So at about a month and a half in, you could send out direct mail to that person and then you wanna have it scheduled. So three months after that, you're gonna be mailing the same expireds. Now, we'll, we'll talk about this in a little bit. This, this is gonna get really like wonky if you don't have a system for it though. So you need to think about the system before you start doing it because you're gonna get, it's gonna be chaos if you're just trying to wing everything. So we're gonna send them a mailer three months after that, then three months after that, then three months after that. So basically for about a year and two months, we wanna be following up with these expireds if they have not relisted, okay? If you do that, you're gonna be the only person that's still talking to them, all right? So those are the ones that are gonna be easy pickings for you because they're not gonna be talking to anybody else at that point. And you're gonna have 44 touches with these people before you really stop, okay? Um, so there's some potential issues that you may come across when you are uh, following this system. The first one is when it comes to mailers, it's very time consuming, okay? These mailers can be very time consuming. It's gonna take three to five hours a day for you to just do the mailers. And it can take more than that. Like it could literally take eight hours a day if you keep doing this consistently and you don't stop doing this. So, you know, if you think about it, like if you're looking to build a team, you could start with this is just the sole, this could be the sole lead generation activity that you do. And you can end up like the first person you hire could be somebody who just does mailers eight hours a day where they're doing, they're, they're doing the follow-up systems and the mailers, and that's it. Like, it could be eight hours of that. Um, so this can be very time-consuming. You need to systematize it. Otherwise, it's going to be very time-consuming, and it's going to be very chaotic, and you're probably going to end up frying your brain trying to do it. So when we talk about systems, we're talking about using Excel. So you use Excel or use Google Sheets, to pull the spreadsheets, um, you're gonna pull the data off the MLS, and I already have a video that kind of explains this. So um, again, that video is below in a link. If you want more details on that, go below. But you're gonna um, pull the data via, via Excel, and then you're going to use that Excel spreadsheet and have it set up so like month of January, here's all of our expires that we mailed to. Now it's February, like February 15th. So now those expireds are ready to get that follow-up mailer. So then you do a mail merge and in February, on February 15th, you're doing a mail merge and you're sending out to all of those expireds from January, okay? Then in March 15th, you're gonna send up, set up a mail merge and do all the expireds from February. So you're gonna track all your expireds in separate sheets on a spreadsheet, if that makes sense. So that's a system that you're gonna use to make it way easier for you. Um, if you don't do something like that, you're not going to be able to keep up. Uh, track all of your expired mailer into the Excel file. So that's like you, you, you want to be able to, to know who you're mailing next and be able to just pull that data, put it on a mail merge, have it printed to like Avery labels. So you can just label the envelopes real fast and get it out. You can use mail merge to add the names. If you want to add the names, you can have, you can use mail merge to actually print on envelopes, which we've done before. Our printers ended up jamming up because we were doing too many of it. So we ended up just sticking to Avery labels. Um, 
if you have a really good printer, you should be fine. Ours is like mid-grade. Um, you can buy machines to fold your mail, okay? We're actually looking at getting a folder at least because it can be time consuming to sit and fold mail by hand. Like when I first did this, I was folding mail by hand. I was using lick and stick envelopes because it was too cheap and I would take a sponge and wet it and wet the envelope and fold it down and then I'd stamp everything and then I had a stamper that I'd stamp the address on every envelope. Like it's, it's super, it can be very time consuming. So. Um, use as, as much as you can to systematize it. We still hand address all of the initial mail that goes out. When we do follow-up mailers though, we use either Avery label or print it on the envelope. Uh, there's also the, the prize of these machines is they have a machine that will fold it and stuff the envelope for you. Um, at some point I'd like to get one of those bad boys because that would make life way easier. Uh, imagine how much mail you could pump out doing that. So that, that's the issues that you're going to come across when it comes to these mailers. Um, issues that you're going to come across when it comes to um, phone calls, people are going to reject you, okay? Like if you haven't made phone calls yet, people are going to reject you. And probably the reason you haven't made phone calls yet is because you're afraid of rejection, okay? So stop it. In order for you to be successful in this world, you have to fight the fear of rejection and just move forward and call people, okay? Um, you're gonna get like 10 no's for every yes. Just accept that and deal with it. And when they say no, just move on to the next person. Move on to the next person. You're gonna, you wanna get to the point where you don't even care. Um, if you don't care and you look forward to making your phone calls, then you've like, you've beat 99% of all real estate agents. Uh, you want to get it to a better ratio than that. So when you get good at this, you might talk to five people, you get four no's and one yes. That's where you want to get. When you get good at objection handling, you're going to be able to get a higher conversion rate on appointments and a higher conversion rate in listing, like in the listing presentation process. Um, use scripts. Uh, I used to hate scripts. I was totally against it. When I first started in this business, I thought, well, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to wing it. I don't, scripts are stupid, doesn't sound like me, it sounds like a robot, it sounds like I'm in a commercial or something, so I'm just going to say whatever I want to say. Well, I did this for like three years, and then I, I went to uh, Keller Williams Bold, and they give you the scripts in Bold that they, they say, that, you know, use these scripts. I went through and I read the scripts, and I'm like, man, it took me like three years. For three years, I was winging it, and I came up with what I should be saying over three years, and guess what? It was exactly the same as those scripts. If I would have just used the scripts in the first place, I would have bypassed three years of learning, okay? So that's the thing with scripts. You can bypass three years of looking like a fool and learning the hard way by just learning the damn script in the first place. So just learn the script, okay? So if you're a Keller Williams agent, go to Bold, get the Bold scripts, use the Bold scripts. If you're not a Keller Williams agent, then look up scripts online, find scripts online and use them. The better you get at objection handling with the scripts, and the better you get at the scripts, the more appointments you're gonna get. Issues that you're gonna run in with email, you will need to have better systems. So you can use Gmail, and you can use G Suite, and you can hand, like you can create a template that you're just copy and pasting from like a notepad, and you can do campaigns that way. However, that's very time consuming, and you have to like have a schedule that you're following, and you gotta sit down and manually send out the e email. So you could start that way if you want to, but you're gonna get inundated and, and like just frustrated real quick. So you're gonna need better systems. Uh, real Geeks is like the beginning of a better system. So if you wanna use Real Geeks, again, there's a link below that's gonna save you 150 bucks on it. Go in there, set up your email campaign, set up the drip campaign, and then when you get expireds that come in, you just put them, put them right on the drip campaign right off the get-go. Um, once you get to the point even in Real Geeks, like it will automatically send out the emails, but it uses your email server. So if you're only, like if you're using, for instance, kw.com is a G Suite email address. So you're limited to a thousand emails a day. Once you hit a thousand and one, then Google's gonna shut you down and say, you're spamming people, you can't do it anymore, okay? So 
if you're if you're doing a lot of email campaigns, you're going to hit a point real fast where you're going to have to get another third party system to do email campaigns for you. So use Real Geeks to start and then move to uh, Mailchimp whenever you start getting too much. So you're going to want to end up doing all of your emails from a system like Mailchimp. Okay, so. That's it. I hope that um, answered the questions about follow-up as far as expireds go. So that's 8x8 eight eight and 33 touch. Like It's actually 44 touches that I would ideally do. Um, it's overkill, which is great. Like You want to overkill. Um, you're going to get great results from it. So that's it. If you're still here, post a comment below that says that you made it to the end of the video and tell me what your big aha moment was. Like, what did you take away from this that was the biggest thing, the one thing that you really want to implement? I'll leave that in a comment below. If you've tried this, so if you try this campaign and it's working, post, come back here and post a comment and let everybody know what kind of success you're getting from it. Let us know how it's working. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like below. Hit the notification button so you're getting the notification of new videos as we post them. And sign up for super affordable coaching on my Patreon site. The link is below. See you again.